mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host for this hour. And we've been talking to callers about riots that took place over the weekend. One of them in Arizona, we saw this video of a police officer. I guess we could call him a police officer. I think he was just a thug, actually. Using his baton instead of, as, as one of the crew members here pointed out, using his baton instead of his hands because that would be assault. But he can use his baton to push this young lady who's just standing there, walking along with a drink in her hand. Knocked her right over. I mean, how can we allow quote-unquote, government servants to continue to do this. We have to get these people under control. We have to get them under control now. People are trying to do that in New Mexico, where we saw the murder of a homeless man by police officers, excused by the police chief there immediately. We've had many people call in talking about the rules of engagement as they were trained. Of course, we know anybody that has taken, for instance, a concealed carry class knows that you cannot shoot somebody when they are no threat to you. Clearly, if you watch this video, the man was no threat to them. I wanted to move on to some different news now. We had, uh, came out today on InfoWars, Paul Joseph Watson's story that Bilderberg 2014 has been uncovered. They are going to meet in Denmark. Yes, this is the secretive organization of global power brokers that uh, for many decades, of course, did not exist according to the mainstream media. Many of us are pointing that out. Alex Jones has been on that from the get-go. But, of course, we were scoffed at and laughed at. Uh, Alex was called a conspiracy theorist to even use the word Bilderberg. And yet, it's now become a open secret. It's still secretive. They still don't tell people what's going on there. We can see who is going on there. And, of course, last year, the... Focus apparently was big data. We saw the likes of uh, Jeff Bezos, uh, people who were involved with Palantir, uh, PayPal, and other uh, organizations like that showing up at Bilderberg talking about what they were going to do. And so this year will be no different. And of course, as Paul Joseph Watson points out in his article, in 2009, Bilderberg chairman... We even bragged about how the euro single currency was a brainchild of the Bilderberg group leaked minutes from the, I think it was a 1956 meeting, it was close to one of their first meetings, showed how they were planning at the time for the EU and for the Euro. They were planning consolidation. They were planning global world government. And last year, we had an Italian lawyer that requested the public prosecutor of Rome to investigate Bilderberg for criminal activity questioning whether the group's 2011 meeting in Switzerland led to the selection of Mario Monti as the Prime Minister of Italy. Of course, that is an unelected person. Mario Monti was unelected. He is a former Goldman Sachs banker, and they just took out the guy that had been elected, and they put in the Goldman Sachs banker, calling him a technocrat, because that makes it okay if you call him a technocrat. Now, there's other kinds of meetings just besides Bilderberg, of course. And we saw one that was very interesting over the weekend. We saw Chris Christie and Jeb Bush and John Kasich and Scott Walker, all governors or former governors, all going to Vegas to meet a sugar daddy for the Republican Party. That would be Sheldon Adelman, Adelson. And if you remember the 2012 elections, he had a big role to play in Vegas in the caucuses there. Uh, it was a, a pretty disgusting display of corrupt power, in my opinion. And they reported this in the New York Times, seeking political revival, Christie joins 2016 contenders at a GOP forum. Now, they're talking for the most part because Sheldon Adelson is a neocon, He, especially when it comes to Israel. He's part of the Republican Jewish Coalition. A, and he has contributed a lot of money in the last election cycle, just his family, $93 million. And so we're going to report about it. It was actually kind of funny what happened to Chris Christie as he's trying to get himself out of Bridgegate when he went to Vegas. We'll be right back with that information and more of your calls. So stay tuned. In the last 
50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record, reports documented, a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base, nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield nascent iodine exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield nascent iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Why does the United States spend the largest percentage of GDP in the world on health care? Why do we have the highest cancer rates on the planet? The highest rates of diabetes, autism, and every other major disease. It all comes down to one thing. We are what we eat. Our food is devoid of nutrition and processed with poisons and additives. Our water is filled with toxic poisons and big pharma runoff. All of this has been engineered by design. We can turn the tide against the eugenicist by giving ourselves the nutrients our body desperately needs. To learn more, visit InfoWarsHealth.com. The site is literally packed with audio and video featuring top health professionals who don't bow down to Big Pharma. The fight against the New World Order starts with you, and you can't stand against the machine of your sick, tired, and obese. When you visit InfoWarsHealth.com, be sure and check out the catalog with nearly 400 life-changing products, and get free shipping when you sign up for AutoShip. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formula fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Generals gathered in their masses Just like witches He aligns himself masses. with the truth And it's time for you to choose a side Minds You're listening to Alex Jones Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. Now, we just had some news on InfoWars about the Bilderberg Conference, where it's going to be. It's going to be in uh, Denmark this year. But there's actually something else that happened this weekend, and that was the Sheldon primary. Haven't you heard of the Sheldon primary? You know, that's Sheldon Adelson. Remember back in 2012? This was the guy in Las Vegas that got his very own caucus. That's right. That was the way The Atlantic reported it. This was the guy who had a caucus that was just for Jewish people, and nobody else is going to be allowed to go to that. Because, see, if you had to work as a working mom and you couldn't attend the caucuses on uh, Saturday night, then uh, you were not going to be allowed to go to the caucus on Sunday. That was going to be only going to be for Jewish voters. Well, that's not the way it turned out. People showed up anyway and said, you can't exclude us based on religion from caucusing. If you're going to add another day for convenience for somebody else or because they have a reason that they can't attend on a Saturday night, then you're going to allow us to come in too. It's, it's no more of a reason to say that uh, you can't do it for religious reasons than to say that you can't do it because you're working a job. So this guy who had his very own caucus in Nevada, and it was a very, very corrupt caucus. This is one of those caucuses 
where the GOP showed its worst, most corrupt side. And there were several of those. And there were state officials that got taken out of office because of that. But now it's coming up to the 2016 elections. And this same guy, Sheldon Adelson, is holding the Sheldon primary. Now, that was just this last weekend. And that was the way it was reported from Heretz. That's a Jewish newspaper. He's deciding who he's going to put his money on. And, of course, he's got a lot of money to put down. This guy is a multi-billionaire, and he gave $93 million in the last presidential election. Let's put that into perspective. Al Gore in 2000 spent about $100 million total. Okay, Sheldon gave $93 million in the last election for president. Now, of course, in that election, Bush spent about 200 So combined, they had about $300 million. Now, let's fast forward to the last election. It's been going up rapidly. In 2012, it was over $2 billion that was spent between Obama and Romney. So you go from $300 million in 2000, where people were accusing these guys of over-the-top spending because it was so much higher than they'd ever had before, accused Bush of buying the election. Now we go from $300 million in 2000 to Two billion, a little over two billion, in 2012. Amazing, amazing how it is going up. Like, a, what is that? A factor of seven in just 12 years, in just a few election cycles. And of course, where did he put that money back in uh, 2012? Edelson was backing Gingrich, so he doesn't have a very good track record. But he does like to back people who are neocons, people who are pushing for war, especially people who are pushing for war with the Arabs, because he is a Zionist. He's part of the Republican Jewish Coalition. And so, as they pointed out in the New York Times, seeking political revival, Christie joins 2016 contenders at a GOP forum. That would be the Sheldon primary. Now, what was on store there, they were pushing back against Rand Paul, essentially. Rand Paul was not there, but he was the punching bag for everybody. He was a pinata that everybody was kicking back against, because they were all trying to show how strong and militaristic they were going to be. This was Chris Christie, Jeb Bush, John Kasich, Scott Walker, Republican governors, some still in office, most still in office. As Walker said, if they don't believe we're strong, they'll take action. Jeb Bush said, we can't have American passivity. And it says, in a sign of mounting anxiety about the presidential aspirations of Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky, who has complained that American foreign policy is too overreaching, Jeb Bush pointedly warned against isolationism, seen as a rebuttal to Mr. Paul. Now, the interesting thing is, I think, the reaction, what, what John Kasich did. Of course, he's the governor of Ohio. He delivered a luncheon speech on Saturday to a crowd of several hundred. He repeatedly referred to Sheldon as if the billionaire were the only other person in the room. See, he's not auditioning for president. He's auditioning for puppet he wants to be his puppet. But the most interesting thing, the funniest thing about it was, as Christie is trying to pull himself back from Bridgegate, what he does is he's bragging about how you know he's trying to make common cause with the Jewish people there. And so he talks about how you know Israel is about the size of New Jersey, and um, maybe he should have said, uh, maybe it's about the same number of characters in the name. Only if you're in common court does it have the same number of characters. But you know, he's bragging about how they're, they're kind of common. But he touched off disapproving whispers, according to the New York Times, from the crowd when he described flying over occupied territories where Palestinians live. Oops, oops, we're not supposed to use that term when you're addressing a Zionist organization. A prominent Jewish leader, Morton Klein, said he tried to correct Mr. Christie as he left the stage, urging him to use different language, like, quote, disputed territory. Mr. Christie scowled, he said. And I and did not say whether he would do so in the future. I was shocked, said Mr. Klein, national president of the Zionist Organization of America. But that's okay. Chris Christie saw the light when he met in person with Sheldon. A few hours later, during a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Mr. Adelson, Mr. Christie apologized for the phrase. See, when America attacks and occupies a country, or Israel attacks and occupies a people, we do it as liberators. We're not occupiers. Say we're, we're the good guys. But what does this get, Mr. Adelson? When he spends $93 million on an election, what does this get him? Well, he actually gets a pretty good return on investment. Take a look at this story from the Huffington Post. Just last week, 
Bills banning online gambling were introduced in Congress. Pull this up, guys. This Huffington Post article. Look whose picture's there. It's Miss Lindsey Graham. Miss Lindsey Graham is the guy who is carrying his water. Of course, they're on the same page as far as starting wars, too, aren't they? But lawmakers from both parties introduced legislation in the House and Senate on Wednesday to ban online.